Hello, my name is Dick Baldwin, and I want to welcome you to my online lectures for ITSE 2321 Object Oriented Programming Using Java. This series of online lectures will approximate the lectures that I normally deliver in the classroom each semester. When completed, this series of online lectures will consist of quite a few hours of video material broken down into 15 different lectures. Each lecture will, will be broken down into YouTube length segments of approximately 15 minutes each. This is the beginning of part one of lecture six titled Using Nested Loops to Process Pixels. I invite you to visit my college website at the URL that I am highlighting right now where you will find the syllabus for this course along with other online information regarding the course. I also invite you to visit my personal website at the URL that I'm highlighting now. You will find more than 600 tutorials that I have written on various aspects of computer programming, digital signal processing, and other computer related topics on that site. And finally, students enrolled in this course are expected to study my tutorial lessons numbered 1600 through 1630 at the URL that I'm highlighting now in addition to the material in the course textbook. So without further delay, let's enter the world of object-oriented programming. In this lesson, titled Using Nested Loops to Process Pixels, you will learn how to use nested for loops to process pixels on a row and column basis. In particular, I will, will show you how to write a program to produce the image of the lake that you see on the right of your screen. In this lesson, we will write a program named Prob01 that uses the class definition on the right side of your screen along with Barb Erickson's media library and an image file named prob01.jpg to produce the graphic output images that you see on the right of your screen. You may define new classes as necessary to cause your program to behave as required. However, you may not modify the class definition for the class name Prob01 on the right of your screen. In addition to the two output images mentioned earlier, your program must display your name along with the other line of text shown highlighted below. That text will be displayed on the command line screen. If you examine the two images on the right of your screen very carefully, you will see that this program mirrors an image in such a way that the image in each quadrant in the bottom image is a mirror image of the two adjacent quadrants. In particular, the top left quadrant is mirrored into the top right quadrant, then the entire top half is mirrored into the bottom half. To write this program, you must be able to examine the input and output images and determine how the input image has been modified to produce the output image. 
Actually, I just told you that. You must be able to manipulate the individual pixels in the input image to perform the required modifications to produce the output image. As usual, I will explain this program by breaking it down into fragments and then explaining the fragments. The driver class containing the main method for this program is shown on the right of your screen. There is nothing in that driver class that I haven't explained in earlier lessons. Therefore, it shouldn't be necessary for me to explain that code again. So here is a question for you. What is the relationship between the name of a constructor and the name of the class to which it belongs? Note that the highlighted code on the right of your screen instantiates a new object of the class named prob01runner and immediately calls the run method belonging to that object. The constructor for the class named prob01runner is shown highlighted on the right of your screen. The answer to the previous question is that the name of the constructor must be the same as the name of, of the class which it is designed to construct. In this case the constructor simply causes some text to be displayed on the command line screen. Here is another question for you. Is the object that is instantiated from the class named prob01runner on the right side of your screen an anonymous object? If so, why? And if not, why not? The answer is that it is an anonymous object because the object's reference is not saved in a named reference variable. Instead, the new object's reference is used to immediately call the method named run and the value returned from the run method is assigned to the reference variable named PIC. So that gives us a perfect segue into a discussion of the method named run. The code in the driver class on the right of your screen instantiates a new object of the prob01 runner class and immediately calls the run method belonging to that object. The beginning of the run method is now showing on the right of your screen. The code on the right of your screen instantiates a new picture object from an image file and saves a reference to that object in the local variable of type picture named pix. Then the code on the top right of your screen calls the explorer method on that reference to display a copy of the picture in a picture explorer object as shown in the bottom right of your screen. So how about a question? Does the picture class belong to Sun's library or to Barb Erickson's library? The answer is that to my knowledge there is no class named picture in the standard edition Sun library. The picture class that's used in this program belongs to Barb Erickson's MediaComp library. 
Now here is a related question. If Sun's library and Erickson's library both contained a class name picture, how would you differentiate between the two in your code? If you needed to use both classes named picture in the same scope in your code, you would need to specify the package containing the specific picture class each time you referred to it by name in your code. Now getting back to our code, the code on the upper right of your screen calls the method named mirror upper quads for the purpose of causing the upper left quadrant of the picture to be mirrored into the upper right quadrant. A copy of a reference to the picture object is passed to the method named mirror upper quads and the value returned by that method is, sta is saved in the reference variable named PIX. I will have some more to say about this later. So let's put the explanation of the run method on temporary hold while we explain the method named mirror upper quads. The beginning of the method named mirror upper quads is now showing on the right of your screen. Note that this method receives a copy of a reference to our picture object. So here's a question for you. Are the variables named left pixel and right pixel showing on the right of your screen reference variables or primitive variables? And here is a related question. Are the variables named left pixel and right pixel instance variables or local variables? The answer to the first question is that the two variables are reference variables because their declared types are not primitive types. The answer to the second question is that they are local variables because they are declared inside of a method named mirror upper quads. These two variables will be used as working variables and will be used to temporarily store references to individual pixel objects.